Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, usually a good morning and afternoon, uh, but I'm so happy you are here. Susan Wilson, uh, Sean Kosel, Caroline, Steve, Jan, the gang's all here. I'm so happy you are here. Michelle, thank you so much for that message. If the audio and video are good. Feeling good. I had a cup of coffee. It's slowly hitting my, hitting my veins. And uh, we're ready to rock. So let's do this, Frank. Really appreciate you, Frank, the work you've been doing. Feel free to like f follow me on social media. Cody Bear, you do amazing work. It's good to see you too. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get this part of party started. As you can see below, this is about uh, Design Trends Masterclass. Uh, vibrant, vibrant background blends uh, is the idea. So let's just go ahead and switch to my screen and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. That works for you. Let's switch on over. There we are. Fantastic. Hopefully today is going well for you. Today we've got some master classes doing all sorts of things, but also what you'll see in a lot of places is like a lot of um, vibrant, vibrant backgrounds. So we really have a pop of color ultimately. Um, but what I'm going to make are some uh, desktop backgrounds is the idea, but it really sets you up to make just about anything is the idea. Uh, I'm currently looking at Graphic Mama's site. So this is the uh, 2022 design trends. Uh, holographic design. I think I just kind of grouped a couple of these together. Candy colors, holographic design. And we can look uh, easily at both of those, but we're gonna be using colors like this. And what's nice is we could always take this content and uh, we can go ahead and use that in uh, Illustrator or wherever if we want to. So, uh, oh, Jan, that's what you do mainly is uh, desktop backgrounds. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, there we go. So here are like our candy colors just an example right just so you know of our little naked person <laughs> don't make it weird we're all adults like this these are gorgeous let's take this uh, gorgeous design as well right ours are definitely going to be abstract um, and again I'm just doing this for inspiration dropping it right into Illustrator uh, so that's the idea uh, like this like low five brewing that's kind of fun. Look at the vibrant colors. So definitely, if you see some sort of traditional artwork or something somebody expects, but it's been updated, well, how have they updated it? Well, they updated it with all these vibrant colors. And that's what we're going for as well. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Uh, if we take a look at even sort of like these daydream doodles, we'll get into sort of adding some elements to uh, our background as well. So it's not just too boring. Um, but yeah, you could just see a couple elements in there and I'm just kind of scrolling on down. Just getting inspired, right? And I've gotten inspired by a couple other things that I'll share with you in a little bit. Let's jump into uh, Illustrator and get this party started. Uh, is that baby doobie? I don't know. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you, Michelle. You're too kind. See, my hair looks good. I just, I just threw some stuff in it. Uh, but thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. So I kind of just started with a couple elements. You guys know how to draw these basic shapes, but I was thinking of something with a background could be like it, you could, you could take sort of the same scene and, uh, or something similar and have it change sort of like throughout the day. I like that idea for uh, a desktop background. So, so we're thinking daytime bright, um, and then we can always change it as we go along. That's what I have right in here. It's like jumping in. Okay, what does this look like? You know, do we kind of switch up the colors in here? Um, but let's go ahead and add like a burst to it is, uh, is the plan. All right. Cool. All right. So let's kind of, let's move on. Um, we could take something like uh, any one of these, right? We could use the star tool, for instance, and this might be the easiest way to make like a, a sunburst, to be honest with you. Uh, we'll just go right here. Oh, I'm sorry, this is blue on blue. I guess I did kind of pick a back, bad background color since we really can't see it. Let's go, I don't know, is that too bright? Anyways, 
But nonetheless, we'll draw our star. Now we can see those lines a little bit better. Hit the up arrow, right? We can make as many of these that I want, right? So this is just the easiest way to make like a burst, right? So I'll, I'll go ahead and hold down the command key and that's gonna lock the uh, inside point, right? So I just hold down the command key or control key if you're on a PC and then I stretch it out. Right, so now I get these very long spires for this burst. And then I'll hit the down arrow, but this is kind of how I'm getting like this dialed in. Like how thick do I want these like spires, right? So again, that's what I'm doing right now. Kind of, is it like that? I don't know. I'm just playing with this and just kind of seeing what looks good. I would love for it to be even bigger by the way. So let's, I even need to zoom out, but that's okay. You know, I kind of, I do want, I actually do want more. And again, I'm going to hold down the command key, shrink that up. Command key, shrink that up. Right, so these are all my spires. Are there too many? I don't know. I would say that's pretty good. Let's do that. Let's let go. There we are. Boom. <laughs> It's of course the same color as the background, but again, we can throw some yellow on there, just like a different color, as you can see. And we have these uh, radiating lines out from the center. So that's what I was thinking I start with, right? Pretty easy with the star, right? Pretty straightforward. Let's put it like right in the center. And uh, let's actually just even, maybe we'll get rid of that sun, or what I really need to do is I need to chop this up and do some more with it. So don't mind me as I, you know, just do do my job. Get it done. Let's make it happen. Mine and uh, Frank's job. Frank, did you say you do mostly... Uh... <laughs> and I'm hurting people's eyes. I'll change the color. Let's make this soothing, because that's a good point. Like, for a background, the only reason I changed it away from blue is because that was my highlight color. Uh, so let's change my highlight color to red, and then I can change these other ones to say something darker. There we go, maybe that's easier on our eyes, right? But uh, that's what I have, I have all these lovely spires. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract the two, just so you know, I will select both of these. And from here, we will open up. And uh, you guys probably know, I didn't know this until, uh, I don't know, probably like last year. I wanna subtract but you can make a compound shape just by holding down the alt key or the option key. So that means it's gonna keep all of the math, all of those um, vector points, uh, even though you know, it's do, you're doing a subtract to it, just so you know. So click right there, that's all we wanna do. Boom, that's done. There we have that, right? You know, we can ungroup these. Right now I have all these lovely little spires that I wanna work with. Cool. There they are. I'll just duplicate this layer because you know what? That's just my safety. Let's call this safety just in case I screwed up sort of thing. <laughs> uh, and then we'll come in here and each of these are now individual colors and we can go ahead and play with this. Some of you might know what I'm going to do next, which is change the colors of all these because right now it's boring. I mean, it's, it's okay. I mean, I don't know. Like this is a boring background, right? There we go. If you hit Shift F on your keyboard, that's gonna fill your screen and it's basically presentation mode is what we're seeing. Uh, again, kind of boring. I love the idea of doing planets and things like that. So that'll be really cool. Hit Escape. But again, I want all these to be different colors. And again, we're just experimenting with this. I am gonna use my favorite uh, script right over here. We go down to Random Swatches Fill is what I'm gonna use. But in order to use it, uh, it, I need to pick my swatches, right? So we need to pick these fun swatches. And I would say if you're doing a vibrant color background, it's all about the colors, right? It's all about all of these, right? All of this stuff. Right? 
Usually I go, this is my color palette typically. This is very much Paul mode, but I think it's very much like very trendy to go with these colors. And I'm starting to lighten it up a little bit, but I could pick all the colors that I want, or I could even add some additional colors. Like this color palette might be kind of nice as well. So I might go, since it's a background, I might go with something a little more subtle, uh, but still happy and, uh, you know, give me feel good vibes, that's all. Right? So here we go. We'll select these four right down here at the bottom. Uh, what does it say? Oh, it's called pastels. Right? Where do you get these? Well, we can go ahead and go right out here. I don't actually know where pastels is, but if you click down here, you'll be able to find uh, different ones. I would do light or saturated or soft. So again, we can take a look. Let's go to soft, because that sounds nice. Oh yeah, sure enough, in soft are like pastel colors. Very washed out, but we could always punch these up later, right? So again, just grab what you want. Maybe I'll add a couple. I'm getting into it. Get, get it. Oh, that's, that's almost too light. But either way, grab what you want. You could drop it right in there, and now you have your new color palette. Boy, that is like an eye chart right there. Okay, we'll select those. Select all of our little spires, if you will. We'll go to File, Scripts, Random Swatches Fill. Hopefully I still have it selected, Random Swatches Fill. Oh, I might need to ungroup it. Or maybe I just didn't have it all selected. There we go, now they're selected. Now we can do our jazz. There we go. Random swatches filled it. Our, did its job. Thanks, buddy. You did it. All right. So there we are. We have all these like pretty, pretty cool colors. It's still dominated by that background color. So we're going to change it as well. Again, we kind of want to make it vibrant. Right now I'm dealing with just soft pastels. Um, but the main thing is, is I'm just like picking... There we go, picking some colors. Like this alone already is like looking a little bit better. So random swatches fill, we'll fill it randomly and you will get groups like this, right? We can see, oh, there's too many little spires that are that purple color. So yeah, you know what to do. Just kind of jump in, pick some different ones as I'm doing right now. So that's typically what I would do. It's like, oh, you know what? You did a good job. Now let me go in and customize this like I'm doing right now. Mmm, pink. There we go. I'm gonna throw a pink one over here. There we have that. And that's sort of the start of our design. Hopefully everybody's having a beautiful day. Talk to me, how's everybody doing? There's an abundance of purple. So even this is starting to look cool. I don't know, well, there's some things we could do in here. We could take this. Look at how perfect that fits in there. Cause again, I use this shape to subtract it. Uh, but really, this needs to be like, again, our yellow. Still, awfully bright what we have going on here. So we'll work on this. Okay, but that was pretty pretty fast how we made this. What we could also do is we could take this, we'll duplicate it just for, just for fun. I took that layer and I duplicated it. And I just want to like rotate it slightly. So I just doubled. In fact, let's rotate it all the way over. Because I'm kind of thinking... I want to have even more points, like so. So I've just like doubled up the points. And that also, uh, it works. It's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. In fact, we're noticing some of the imperfections. So what can we do? We can take this, we can try this mathematically. If you double click on the rotate tool, you can rotate it by a certain angle. So if we wanna rotate it by a uh, negative one degree. Let's see what happens, click okay. Moved it over way too far. Okay, so in fact, you know, we, we need to do a negative, a positive like 0.5. Right, so what's happening here is I just double clicked on the rotate tool. I know this is really hard to see and I apologize, but we're trying to move this maybe forward just like a fraction, okay? So we'll move it forward by negative point, 
one. And then just hit tab, thing, and it moves it. So zero one. This is getting hard. Zero five, move it back. Okay. I'm just incrementally moving this. So, this is getting into the details, huh? All right, that's good. I, uh, you know, this is good. Cool. Got it. All right, so this is the start, huh? What are we going to do, huh? Let's go ahead and take this. I'm going to duplicate it again. Why not? One more time, just for fun. There we go. All these lovely colors. All right, yeah, not bad. Cool. All right, so the problem with this design that I currently have is like this big sun in the center. This spot's too bright. My intention was to never put it in the middle, right? We're gonna take this. We wanna move it all the way down. Make sure you select everything and then move it on down right at the bottom. And then we're gonna scale it up just a little bit like that. There we go. I don't know, something kind of like that is sort of version one of, uh, of our design. But regardless of what you think of this, I think it's okay. I think I need to really do a whole number on this, right? Because we could talk about the problems with it. I like Noor. <laughs> Noor, we're on the same page. I'm like, yeah, uh, it's, it didn't. It's, it didn't work out too well. Like I was, I was aiming for perfection and I'm like, yeah, maybe we don't need it to be that way. All right, here's another little trick. Cause like, what if I wanted to kind of have this still be, um, you know, the same colors, but maybe give it some grain. So let's just take this, let's make this gray a little overlay. We'll go into effect. Uh, we will go down into our filters. So right in here, we could just add a film grain. So I'll do this just to give it some texture, like paper texture. I could do it to the individual objects, but honestly, that's way too many effects on all of those objects. It just, it's, it's too much things, it'll slow things down. So I just like trying to do this overlay and seeing what's gonna happen. So right over here, we could see the amount of grain that I'm adding, which obviously I can vary. I'm cranking that up a lot just to make sure everybody can see it, we'll click okay. And again, that's just the film grain we're adding to a gray layer that's on top of everything else, right? And the great thing about this is I could turn it on and off depending on uh, you know whether I like it or not or if I continue to work. Then we'll go into the blend modes right over here, right next to opacity. Let's change this to say overlay. Wait for it, wait for it. Do your thing, there we go. And now we just have this like nice, nice graininess to it. And look at how far off this is, by the way. This is going to annoy the heck out of me. <laughs> All right. So there we have. I'm going to show you an even better way if you want to, um, if you really want to make it even more exact for those spires. Uh, I showed you the star technique. So we kind of have this done. I'd say, okay, it's fine. Uh, you know, maybe I want to just go with these original ones. Those aren't bad. Uh, but let's do this one more time. We're going to do this differently. So this will be fun. New layer. Uh, we are going to get just, in fact, let's do this. You ready for this? We're going to take our star tool. Here's our star. Boy. Let's take that back down. Ooh, I still have that. Uh... Hold on one sec. Oh, yeah. I know why that's happening. Reduce to basic appearance. There we go. Okay, so those are my spires, I guess, for my star. I guess I'll just take a polygon 
take that down. With the polygon tool, we can make a triangle. So that's all I was doing. So I'm lazy. I wanted to just make a triangle. Here we are. Let's turn off this. Let's flip it upside down. Let's stretch it out. Because again, we want to be more exact now. Um, and we want to be able to control the shape, right? So what if we want this to have this like spire thing? Um, but we want to be able to just like control this shape. I'm going to rotate it. It's going to be, say, right here, for instance. And now let's take this. Let's just put it in the center for us. Let's make it a different color. And let's go to Effect, Distort and Transform. And then we're going to go into Transform, right? So here we go. Transform. This is perfect. Again, I want to make this more exact. I want, to, I want to rotate this 180 degrees, right? I want to rotate it from this uh, far right point. So I'm putting that anchor point right there. So the anchor point's right there in the center, bam, of the page, but technically it's on the right side of the object. And it just went ahead and it just flipped it, right? But the magic button is right down here, is the number of copies. Right, so if I want to have ten, that's not going to be easy. Let's do let's do twelve. I want to have twelve copies of this, of this like ray of light. Then I could say one eighty divided by twelve gives me a fifteen degree rotation all the way around. Uh, notice how it did it underneath. We'll do negative fifteen, and now it's on top. Right, so this already proved to be much easier. Right, does it, hopefully that makes sense. I did twelve copies and then it's rotating it negative 15 degrees and dropping a new copy all the way around. We'll click OK, and that's what we want. Fantastic, this is so much better than the other one. Wouldn't you agree, huh, Afroja, what do you think, huh? Steve, Steve's in the house. Steve's in the house, Steve's in the house. So much better, oh. I'm just, I might scrap the other one altogether, yeesh. Okay, we have a ray of light that we could always change the color for. As you can see, like so. Yeah, so I'm totally into this. Like this is like so much better. Um, from there, yeah, I can duplicate it and then break it apart and then do our color splash. Let's just go ahead and let's get to work, people. Expand appearance, boom, there they all are. Ungroup them, bam. Uh, just turn off everything so everybody can see all these lovely rays of light. Let's, let's do some serious color splash this time. So we're going to hold down our command key and we're going to start selecting these swatches. This one, this one, this one. All these beautiful colors. In fact, we'll put them right up here at the top. Bingo. We're going to do these five colors. That's such a Paul palette. Get a, come on, man. Random swatches fill. Let's try that again. And it doesn't like me. <laughs> try this one more time. Oh, you son of a biscuit. Sorry for my cursing. Random swatches Phil is like, nah, I'm not gonna work for you today. I worked for you earlier. Bear with me. Throwing in some color bursts. So that is the risk you run if you're working with, um, da -da 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 -da. if you're working with uh, something that you downloaded off the internet, you're like, is this going to work? And you'll be like, hey, man, this doesn't work. They're like, hey, what are you going to do? You want your money back? It was free. 
Okay, we have our bright colors now. And there's our sun. And then anytime, if you're ever struggling with colors, let's turn on this film grain. and that's gonna look nice. Um, I'm gonna select everything. Now remember, this is what I had a hard time with the other day and I gotta see if this is gonna, if it's gonna be my friend or not. But let's go to edit, edit colors and recolor this artwork. Okay, there, here's the pastels and all those different colors. So I can say, hey, you know, make it, make it pastels if I want to, right? Make it bright, renaissance, you get the idea, right? We'll go into edit and uh, start to adjust these colors a little bit more if I want to. But I will do this sometimes. What it does in here is it took my six colors and reduced them down to four since there was only four colors in my pastels. You guys go back up here, hit reset, and then dive in and pick a, a different set. So maybe these brights, for instance, gives me an entire different color palette. I'm gonna reset that again. If we wanna go beyond that, sort of based on the colors that I already have selected, we can go into, say, our complementary, right, and start to dial that in accordingly. Hit edit. And adjust. Okay, there we go. All righty. Edit colors, recolor artwork. Um... All right. Yeah, there we have it. So this is the one that I think is best for what we've been doing. About 28 minutes in, just so you know. I'll probably increase that grain one more time. Let's go into our film grain effect and crank that up some more. All right, how's everybody doing? Uh, Trying different patterns. Okay, sure. Let's go with that. All right, we got it. Let's move on, shall we? Because this isn't bright enough. Again, we want this to be a lovely sunny day. We want to have vibrant backgrounds. That little, it's that little dot right there. So one of the issues, the reason we're not seeing a lot of that grain is because this is the whole size of my desktop. So it's absolutely huge uh, graphic, right? Um, there's a chance that I might even like go into uh, Photoshop and um, apply some film grain to this. But anyways, there it is. Let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next one, people. Here we go. Ready and go. Also, sorry, I'm ignoring some of the other chat elsewhere. Uh, I see Michelle, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. David. Uh, David, so sorry, just catching this. The Behance link, just go to behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. 
All right, so we did this one. I'm actually going to just kind of move on to an entirely new document. File, new. Just to kind of clear this up, we're going to work on a second one. Let's check the size of this. 3,000 by 1692. massive. Okay, so let's move on to our next project. I'm going to drop in a rectangle and we'll play with colors even easier. And I really, this is mainly focusing on Illustrator, but I always bring some of this into Photoshop. I would totally do it, but um, uh, it's also not listed in the description. So I sometimes get in trouble if I use a different app and it's not listed in the description, right? Which is totally fair. All right, so we're going to go into our gradients. Uh, right up here is a number of things we could do. We'll jump in and add our freeform gradient. Shabam, there it is. Got all of our little gradient color stops right in here, right? So yeah, we'll go on down the line. Notice how I made this from my, my particular uh, file that has all these colors baked in. So it makes it really easy for me to jump in and uh, add colors. So we're going to do a combination of white, pink, and then a little bit of yellow. Throw some more color dots in here because we want it to get brighter toward the center, kind of like that. So again, easy way to kind of just do a quick color splash. Okay, from there, let's go ahead and duplicate this. And go back into, if we ever want to bring those freeform gradients back, click in your gradient panel, edit gradient. Now we can do more with it because we start to add a line. So if I want to add like a swooshy line to this, let's move this over. Click. So once I define this line, oh, excuse me, I need to make this a line right up here. I'm going to make this a line right in here. We're going to click on this one. And all of a sudden I get this line. But let me double click on it because I'm going to make it yellow. So I've actually established the color. And now here's my line. So I can have it go down. Watch it give me that nice curve, go up and kind of wrap around like that. So this gives me that nice flowing line through this project. Uh, if I want to do that sort of thing, okay? We'll go back down to points. As soon as you change it back to points, you could start to extend and play with this line sort of all you want, right? So that's the idea. Something kind of like that. It's almost too strong, but I like what's happening when these colors start to blend together. And if it wasn't for the freeform gradient tool, we would not see these like uh, lovely oranges right in here, right? And again, if I decide this is too bright, even though it's on a line, I can actually jump in and change that to, say, a different color. And again, what we get is this nice sort of blending of colors like so. So this already is, is looking pretty good, right? I'd probably even call this done, okay? But let's add some more to it. Let's throw some, something else on top. We'll jump in. We're going to throw in our colors. Notice when I do that, since it keeps, it actually keeps my last used colors right in here. We can see all of those little bursts, which is, uh, yeah, which is okay, I guess. But I'm going to just drag that down and start to duplicate it. I'm going to try to see if my random swatches fill works in a new file. Don't forget to select all the swatches.
There we go. Maybe this does need some yellow. There we go, cool. All right, so we're dealing with color bars now. And uh, this is what I wanna do. I wanna take these color bars, scrunch them up, and we're just gonna get into something like a little bit more trippy and wavy and fun. So if you notice, Right underneath the, the width tool, we're gonna to use the warp tool, okay? Does that work for you guys? Uh, warp tool. Hold down the option key and you can change the size of the brush. Hold down the shift key, it's gonna constrain the width and the height. So we'll just get something kind of big like that and then we can start to go ahead and push around these colors. We could be um, really uniform with it by holding on the shift key and then pressing up, right? We get that nice waviness sort of cutting up as you can tell, right? We could do the same thing over here, sort of push down now we just have these nice, almost like a topographic map, something. Wavy lines. Cool. So anytime you use this tool, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get these little gaps because it actually is not connecting or bending those lines um, sort of at the same the same rate. So you will have to clean that up. Or what you could do is you could go ahead and hide it. So I could take all these and say, hey, you know what? I decided I want there to be like white lines in between all of the strokes. So I basically hid them like that. And that looks better, at least for a start. Wavy lines, easy enough. So like I said, it's starting to look like a topographic map. So I want to go with that. Uh, yeah, or sound waves, that's good, Jeffrey, I like it. So let's have some more fun with that, because I'm thinking, you know, we've gone from these colors to color bars to color waves. Uh, it looks like sort of, uh, it could look like mountains, could look like sound waves, but I'm going to go with something based on... Um, sort of a, a top view, a topographic map. So that's what we're gonna work with now. Cause we, anytime we make a background, it can get a little boring and that's like, okay, but we wanna have some more fun with this. So I'm gonna hit N for pencil. And uh, we'll go with black and we'll just draw just like an interesting shape. There we go. Shape number one. Oh yeah. Let's actually connect these two lines. Command J, boom, there it is. Let's take the same line, we're gonna duplicate it. Make it larger. And uh, we'll start just kind of pushing these lines around a little bit more. Do you know if you use, hopefully everybody likes this, Imprecise Pass, the production artist and you just died. <laughs> so this is a way actually what you can do, this is a way where you can get those perfect wavy lines and it should all line up is by using the blend tool. So a lot of people saw where this is going using the blend tool. Um, so again, this is gonna blend into this line, but what's cool is I can come in here and grab this path And if you roll over the path, you're gonna get this um, curvature tool basically allowing you to kind of bend that line out. So what I'm using is I'm using the, um, 
right over here, the direct selection tool. And when you hover over a line, if you have those points, not all the points selected, you can go ahead and bend that accordingly. Or what you can do is let's take a look right in here. Anchor point tool, let's just double click. Oh, maybe not. Uh, you could also use the anchor point tool and it's gonna bend it the same way. So anyways, let's go ahead and blend this. Let's make it white. Blend tool. Fifty. There we go. Something like that. All right, there's our fun uh, sort of topographic uh, design. And now I'm gonna start bending things out a little bit more just to kind of fill this space. Still awfully bright in the center. Oh, I like this one. Oh good, I'm so glad I have more time. Oh, this is gonna take a while. It's already looking cooler. You get the idea. Carrie Johnson, one of your favorite artists is uh, Peter Max, huh? I do not know Peter Max, but I would like to. All right, it's gonna take the second line and uh, we're gonna adjust the thickness of it. You take this down and you'll see it kind of taper out, which I think it looks cooler. And shoot, we could take that out to zero, but now we can see the, the thickness of the lines in the center as it tapers out just looks a little bit cooler. But the biggest problem I have with this is like that white in the background, right? It's just too strong. So let's go back in and edit this and get something that we like, shall we? Can we just make something we like, please? Edit gradient. There it is, that crazy, crazy point. Now, what's gonna happen if I hit the delete key? <clears throat> it's gonna go ahead and remove it. <clears throat> I thought I was gonna delete the whole object, actually. <clears throat> Let's jump in and add more colors. Expand out that white a little bit. It was just a little bit too white uh, for my liking. That's all. Okay, done. Let's let's move on. Shoop. Cool. Fantastic. We did it. All right. Let's shift gears a touch. Oh, you could drag one side completely over to the other side. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I think in my experience, the less points you have for your blend tool, just the better off you are. But let's try that. We're going to take this one, drag it clear to the other side. Let's take this one, drag it clear over there. Oh, yeah, that's cool, too. I love it. 
So yeah. We went from a topographic sort of design to uh, something a little more time warpy, which which I'm into. Um, just so you know, the topographic design was actually inspired by like my wood doors have this. If you if I took a photo of it, you would think that it's actually a topographic map. But I'm into this as well. So let's yeah, let's go with this. Let's add a little bit more to this. We could add more to this a couple different ways because it's starting to look like time warp. Do we start to add? And I see people do this. It's just like a um, a good way to kind of add some individual elements. We could always add some like little spheres, right? Some some like floating planets or dots or bursts or something like that, right? And maybe this does look like a planet, for instance. I know the colors are all off. We'll get it squared away. Still way too bright. Still way too bright. So what do we do? We want to get a bounce of color. We want to have a like multi-point light system going on here. Move it up, grab it, make this circle. Kind of like that, there we go. Some little like fun spheres in here that we can play with, all right? That's all. Actually, once you have these established, you can jump in and change the color, or you can use recolor artwork to uh, manipulate the colors even more. But I think this works just fine, just jumping in and adding, say, purple for this one. And now you have your fun little orbs kind of floating around. It's kind of interesting for what it's worth. This one's going to be behind these lines, so let's take it. New layer, paste. And now it's kind of back there a little bit further. In fact, let's make sure the opacity of this object. Let's knock it down a little bit. Maybe it's a, a floating orb kind of back there, maybe a little bit further. Zoop. Cool, cool. All right, fantastic. We did the thing. All right, let's take this to the next level. I got five minutes. Yeah, it's getting a little psychedelic. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, I want to, I'm, so we've explored so many ideas dealing with vibrant colors and, uh, I hope you're into it, but, um, I kind of want to revisit, um, like these lines. Okay. Can we just revisit these lines? Cause this, this got really boring really fast. But what I do want to do is I want to take these lines, maybe less of these lines. Let's just grab these ones. Let's copy it. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, whatever. What the heck? Oh yeah, let's not be on that layer. New idea, number 12 or however many. Ooh, get there, Paul, make it happen. Hurry up, you don't have much time. Back in here, we're gonna revisit these lines and I think this will be fun. So uh, pasting these in. And what I would do is I would take these lines. So I like it, but I, I, I Somebody mentioned the comment about being more exact, so I want to be more exact. Oh yeah, we could use Liquify. See, Carol, are you giving me a hard time because I always use Liquify? You probably are. Are you giving me a hard time? <laughs> it's okay if you are. So I'm going to take this and uh, I want to be more exact with it. I'm actually going to turn it into a brush. So right down here, I'm going to drag this, drop it in here, and uh, it could be an art brush, which means it's going to. I could stretch it. Um, but I think I'm going to use a pattern brush. Pattern brush gives me. I don't know, maybe a little bit more control. Pattern brush, I can add little ends on this, which will look good, but I'll click okay. And now I have my pattern brush. So now I can say, I can start to draw this out. M maybe it's some lettering, but we'll just start with a uh, simple uh, rectangle as we can see here. And let's go ahead and pick that brush right here, boom. So now we have now we have something that's going to be more exact. 
Yeah, there's not a skull. Thank God there's not a skull or flower in sight. I just can't. Ah, you guys would be like, oh, I can't take it. Can't take it anymore. So this is what I want. I want these lovely curves that I could work with. So now we can create some fun interlocking shapes where this is going under, um, under, over, all that fun stuff, right? So that's what I would do here. Uh, let's take this, let's just duplicate it, and let's actually change the color because I can't even see magenta. I don't know, blue? I could hardly even see the selection lines. Uh, but nonetheless, let's move that over there. Let's just have some fun with this, huh? Let's have maybe these are interlocking. Maybe this is going underneath, you know? You know, guys, you know how we do it. Take this, maybe get rid of this point up here. Like that. So now we can have this go underneath. Actually, I take that back. I could, uh, I don't want that to continue. Let's bring that back. Bring it back, people. Let's add a point. Now we're going to select this piece of this line, hit delete. There we go. Just wanted a, a little bit of this line segment right there. And now we can play with this kind of going underneath like that, right? And keep in mind, I can still control the, um, the curves right in here. So this started, again, originally with a rounded rectangle, but I could come in and make that sharper or more tight if I selected everything. Didn't quite select everything. Um, it doesn't know that that part is a, is a curve, but anyways, you get the idea. Take it, jeep, jeep. It's the same element. And check this out. Let's try this, you ready for this? Oh good, I got three minutes left. Oh, there's no time. There's never enough time. Throwing a line down there, right? Just gonna get this little swooshy guy coming in. Maybe it's, we'll make this right angle. Oh, I decided I wanna make it curved. Yeah, no problem. Select, zoop, just like that. We could bend that like so. So that's the idea for this one is like more of an angular approach, but it's still like a very vibrant background. And there's not a skull in sight. There we go, we got that swooshiness. I'm just filling this up with these simple curves. I like it when there's more uh, more overlapping. I just think it looks cool when these parts are like coming under and over and all that stuff. But there we have it. One more, hey, oh, nope. Take this one, zoop. Move it over there. Boom, done in no time, right? Pretty easy. Man, Reverb Mike, that's an old school saying, and I love it. So again, super easy. I could throw some textures on this. I didn't even get into what I kind of wanted to do in Photoshop too, which would have been uh, really fun. But uh, we'll have to save that for another day. Um, yeah, so, because personally I've been getting into a lot of brushes, but I do want to say, you know, thank you. Zoop, zoop. You. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you guys hanging out. Sorry this one isn't as vibrant as it should be. Guess what? Shabam! There we go. Mix it up. All right. Until next time, thank you so much. You guys have been fantastic. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, I appreciate you guys just hanging out with me on this fine Friday. We have, uh, hopefully you're on Behance.net. If I missed anybody's name and all that stuff, I'm so sorry. Uh, but thank you so much, Susan and Mike and Michelle and Carol and Penny and everyone. Um, 
yeah, we got a full lineup next, not to worry. So, uh, in fact, we got should have Terry Terry White up. My favorite Photoshop and Lightroom features. Ah, uh, uh, my favorite f uh, Photoshop feature lately has been the Mixer Brush. I don't know how I missed it, but thanks so much for watching, guys. Appreciate you guys, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.